what really matters in life. How do you describe good stewardship in 2021? Welcome to lunch. Oh my Lord, sing hallelujah. today is a life coach and organizational consultant all the way from Louisiana. Welcome to lunch, Tyler Boudreau. Hello. Hey y'all. Thanks for having me. How are you today? I'm doing very well. Uh, I'm so glad to be a part of lunch, Nanye, and everything that you guys are, are doing. Uh, it's a privilege. I know you've had a lot of great guests, so it's just awesome to connect with you guys today, hopefully over lunch. Amen. Thank you so much for stopping for lunch. It's a blessing. <laughs> So Tyler, yes. what's on your mind for the body of Christ? What could God be saying to the church today? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when I was thinking about that, Nanye, I was um, I was just thinking about a, a series that we've been in in Revelation at my local church. And uh, one of the things, obviously, if you're talking about Revelation, you're talking a lot about eternity. And about a week ago, I was walking around and just this thought came to mind that um, whatever truly matters, matters forever. And it's just a perspective that I've really been chewing on that from an eternal perspective, um, ultimately, you know, there's a lot of things that matter. They matter to God. They should be a priority to us, but they're kind of in a minor category. But in the major categories, those things are going to matter eternally. They're going to matter forever. And uh, one of those things is absolutely people. You know, uh, I think it's pretty obvious when you study the Bible, you study the Gospels, you just listen to what Jesus said. Um, uh, some of the greatest commandments, right, come from love God, love people. And so uh, eternally, people are going to matter more than anything because those souls matter more than anything. And so I've been thinking about that a lot, uh, even as I've done life coaching, as I've done organizational consulting, because the things that all, every business, church, organization have in common is people right? For better or worse, no matter how difficult we may be, no matter how great we may be, uh, it's people. And that's what matters the most long term. So I've just been thinking about that quote a lot. I like that. So let's talk about people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I've had uh, the privilege to help several churches with, help several organizations in the secular field as well, is um, I had an opportunity to go from uh, intern to a, a leadership level position over the course of 10 years. And so you can see every aspect of an organization and what's been awesome as I've now been in a, in a different seat helping other people in their organizations is understanding that sometimes the greatest thing that we have to steward when it comes to people and relationships is really communication and making sure that there's clarity. So regardless of who's watching right now, you could be a pastor, a minister that's watching, you could be a business leader, you could be in middle management in an organization, it doesn't really matter because we all have leadership, which is just influence. There's people we may be leading, there's people that we're leading that are side by side, and there's people above us that we can lead, um, we can lead vertically as well. And one of the things that I think uh, that's all too common that I see kind of go to the wayside is just making sure that people have clarity. I never forget when um, I was asked to, uh, to oversee a certain group of people was a certain department and the, the main leader was very upset with their performance over the last year and they said hey i want you to go in and <laughs> just let people go if need be like just so fed up right with uh uh, things not meeting expectations <clears throat> and i'll never forget as i started to have a conversation with some of the people in that department it became obvious to me that they didn't even know what the expectations were and so what I would say to anybody listening, regardless of what your level of leadership and influence looks like, is I would make sure that there's three to four things in place before you just assume that somebody is um, not going to reach a certain capacity or don't have a certain potential. Because ultimately, regardless of what's going on seasonally, I think if we don't steward people well in communication and expectations, we can really mess them up long term. And I know that we're not completely responsible for how somebody chooses to react and lead the rest of their life, but especially in ministry contexts, you know, if I was to say before really getting in and having some serious conversations, hey, 
you can't do this. You're not good at this. Think about the think about the lifelong ramifications for somebody's calling or, or what they're called to do that maybe there just wasn't clarity. So as I got in there, I realized that this group of people did not have any type of clarity. And I say, if you can't put it on a piece of paper, it's not clear enough. So they didn't know exactly what they were supposed to be doing. And then, so I, I built it out on a piece of paper, handed it to them. Then they needed to know how to do it. They needed an example. So they needed some professional training, you know. Here, watch me as I do it. And now you can try to do it and I'll watch you. <clears throat> and so I would make sure that everybody has clarity and they have professional training. Because sometimes as leaders, as uh, people that are communicating, things are so clear in our minds, right? We think, oh yeah, I know exactly what's wanted, but we never say it out loud. And sometimes we never even build out the exact expectations that we have. And so we're ex we're expecting something of someone kind of generally, but we haven't truly defined it either. And I just don't think it's extremely loving when we ask somebody to, to meet an expectation that hasn't even been fully defined in our mind. So we make sure that they have clarity. We train them professionally in something that they may need. But I will say this too. Sometimes you just need to coach people personally. Uh, I found that the people that still weren't performing well, they I was, I was thinking, man, they have clarity. I've trained them professionally. They've seen me do it. What's the holdup? And then I realized as a Christian, there's things in their soul that are holding them back. This person knew exactly what to do, but couldn't get over the hump because they were struggling through a wound or insecurity that they had from a previous event in their life. And so I say, when you have any manager, any leader, any pastors listening to me, you may think, yeah, that's messy. That takes time. Remember, the things that truly matter are going to matter forever. And if anything's worth having a long leash and spending extra time, it's people. And I think God's going to ask us, how we stewarded the people that he gave us influence with. And so I just, it's something that's really been on my heart to help uh, pastors and leaders of every sort really get that right because there's long-term ramifications and it's extremely important. I think it matters to God. So Tyler, you're saying that good stewardship matters a lot. And of course, the Bible says it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think I think that comes down to a lot about stewardship, honestly, Nanya, because it, what it's saying is, I think to a certain extent, and only the Holy Spirit sometimes is the only thing that's governing that when nobody else sees, you know, depending on what your capacity as a leader is, the position that you sit in, you really have to have a lot of, uh, you got to make sure that you are being convicted and you give time for the Holy Spirit to speak to you as to what you're supposed to do. Only you know if you've given it everything you have with that person, if you've taken and gone the extra steps to make sure that there is clarity, there's training. Have you loved them well to make sure they've gotten over any personal humps as well? And this isn't just in a work environment. My goodness, this is certainly true in our families. This is certainly true of our kids, of our friends. And uh, I think that when we, we talk about stewardship a lot, and sometimes in the church world, we our mind jumps to finances. But I think the number one thing we're called to steward is relationships. And so I absolutely think uh, there's something to be said about the passage that you just mentioned. I'm glad you say that because I was just thinking someone working today might not necessarily be a church or business leader, but they are certainly leaders in some way, shape or form. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, if there is even a singular person you talk to on a weekly basis, you are a steward. And that is a relationship that God's put in your life. And um I've seen it, you know, in, in life coaching, we talk a lot about like five love languages and all of your key relationships and stuff. And people, you know, not to go off on a side note, but stewardship is also one of the things that makes us so unique and difficult is that we're all different. We have different preferences, styles of communicating. Uh, we are all different in how uh, we like to be communicated to, how we receive communication, how we give communication. So anybody needs to take the time to really understand how's this other person wired? How do they receive communication? What's the most loving way to communicate with them? Because it might not be how you receive communication on by default because we're all different and God created us that way. And sometimes that's not quick <laughs> and it's not easy and it's tough but I think it's worth it. So Tyler, why does that really matter? Why do I have to be mindful of your communications preferences, for instance? <laughs> well, I, I would say that, I don't know if you've ever heard the term that perception is reality. 
And the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter what your motivation is. I had a fantastic pastor and leader tell me one time, you can say anything as long as you have the right timing and the right tone. I see a lot of leaders, especially old school leaders, they think they kind of roll their eyes at this concept. But think about it this way. Think about all the unique ways. If you were to go back and start from the Gospels and go through them, you'll see Jesus' different ways he communicated to different people. He did not talk to Peter the same way he talked to the woman at the well. Why? Why did he ask certain questions a certain way? Because he knew the goal wasn't to get a message across. The goal was to connect with that person on a very deep level. And that's the most loving thing that we can do. I think that's one of the most practical ways that we actually love people as we love ourselves. Okay, so in terms of reaching out to the world with the gospel, we certainly need to be mindful how we do it. We need to communicate at the right levels. Don't we? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the Apostle Paul, I believe, said, I became all things to all people. And I, I think that a lot of that ended up actually being when you get down uh, to the practical element, it was being able to connect with different types of people in different ways. And um, it was a willingness to be able to do that and figure out what that style and that preference looked like. So I think that's one of the greatest ways that we can show uh, the love of Jesus and the gospel is to be like Christ in that. And well, the authors of the Bible who had the same goal as that, I think they modeled that for us as well. Okay, so in terms of what's happening globally today, how would you connect an average person on the street? How would you share the gospel in the 21st century? Well. I think as I've really tried to grow in that, Nanye, again, um, I don't think it's a bad thing to keep referencing Jesus. Um, there's, there's two things that I think that stood out to me with Jesus and really looking at his interactions with, I can't say random people because it's a little different for Jesus than us. <laughs> he's standing in front of people he created, but he still was fully human too. And so he models that for us. And so I would say, I want to be prayerful and I want to be making sure that I'm listening to the voice inside of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, who is an expert on all things, who is your greatest advisor, I think he has something to say if you ask him practical questions. Um, I was a part of a group several years ago that uh, were astonished that I asked God such direct and practical questions. And I do, because I believe that if he really loves me as much as I know he does, if his thoughts about me are like the grains of the sand, then he cares about my simple questions. God, should I ask this person this right now? I believe that he answers those things a lot of times. I think that we don't think to ask such practical questions. So we saw Jesus always in tune with the Father. And I believe that he did everything God wanted him to do and nothing that God didn't want him to do. So I would first ask God, and then secondly, I would, I would ask the person a lot of questions, not coming in with a preconceived notion of where I need to get somebody to, but just trying to connect with where they're at. And then depending on where they're at, I think really shapes what you say and how you uh, connect with them in your words or action steps after that. I think that Jesus modeled that for us. You know, you, you see him with the woman at the well, ask all kinds of questions. And then he steps in with, with the foresight and the discernment and the knowledge that he had. Yes, you're right. You don't have just one husband and he goes into, but he didn't start with that. He made sure that he knew that that person, that, that, that he loved her first and that there wasn't any judgment or condemnation in that, in that point. And then he reached her in, I would, I think you have to say a very useful way because she took steps uh, to repent and be transformed. So I quite like that. So we need to be Christ-like and we need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Deep. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I love about it too, though, Nanya, is that it, though it is deep, it's also, I think, simple and easy and practical because, again, the heart of God, for God so loved the world that he sent his son, right? He sent the most precious thing uh, to be present, to be right there standing with us on earth. And I think sometimes that's the greatest thing that we can do too, is just be present and, and connect with people. And uh, we won't always know. If you go into every connection or conversation with an end goal, then you're gonna be very disappointed and you're probably gonna mismanage people. Because I'm not even con convinced that Jesus had that in the sense of, yes, absolutely, he wanted to connect with them. And we know his ultimate message. But I think what's dangerous is sometimes we go in with an exact formula. 
okay, I'm going to say this, and then they'll say this, and then they'll say, maybe not. Maybe they won't say that at all. Maybe they're going to completely catch you off guard. So yes, we need the heart of the Father. We need to act Christ-like, and we have to be led by the Holy Spirit because every person's different. And the same expert that's living inside of you is an expert on the person you're trying to talk to and lead as well. And so why wouldn't we ask them for advice? Tyler Goodrow, thank you so much for blessing us today. Thank you all so much for having me. Thank you. And friends, thank you for your fellowship today. <laughs> if this has blessed you, please add your voice to the conversation. And you know what? Tyler loves people a lot. Do you hear him say that people matter a lot? <laughs> so please do send in your comments and questions. And Tyler would only be too pleased to respond. <laughs> Keep fighting the good fight of faith. And I shall see you tomorrow. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Follow the light.